distilling bay laurel today and I thought that it might be fun to make a short video about that process. So a little anatomy of the copper still. This bottom part is essentially your boiling pot. Um, you fill it with water. Uh, I usually fill it as much as, as high as I can because depending on the plant material, I might get um, more hydrosol and also you never want this to empty. So it doesn't hurt to have it as full as you can. And then this first column is um, just for plant material and it has a sieve in the bottom that keeps the plant material from falling into our pot. Um, and this is the add-on. So if I was to have less plant material than I have today, I would only use this top column, which um, also has a sieve right here and would just fit right on top of the pot. And then this is the cylinder that it has coils in it. And so the hot water comes out this tube and the cold water goes in this tube. And they basically, you don't ever want this to get very warm either. So they work together to like keep a very even heat while also creating the condensation that then comes out this spout and into this glass cylinder where the hydrosol and the essential oil collects. This is the ice bath. I have a reusable ice pack which is really nice. And this is my water pump. And it's pumping the cold water into this bottom of the column that I showed you. And the hot water, or warm water, you don't want it to be hot, is coming out. And I have it coiled to as much under the ice water as I can so that it cools down before exiting the tube and being in the bath water. I think that that kind of helps to keep this bath colder for longer. I opted for this water pump as opposed to connecting this hose to an adapter that would fit on my sink head because this process takes a number of hours depending on how much you're trying to extract and it didn't seem the most sustainable to me to just be running our cold water that entire time. So I wanted to find a solution to that and I read up on this ice bath method and it seems to work really well. Um, the hose from the hot water comes in and can cool off a little bit under the ice um, and then you keep this water as cold as you can with the ice and with flushing the warm bath with cold water as frequently as you need to. And then the cold water goes back out, is pumped back out into the still. So now we are starting to see some of the hydrosol and essential oil coming out of the spout and collecting in this cylinder, glass cylinder. And basically this whole part is filling as well right now. So it will begin to fill both this copper cylinder and uh, this glass cylinder at the same time. And once it gets up to here, the hydrosol will begin to be released into this glass and the time that it has to sit in this in these two different cylinders allows the essential oil and the hydrosol to separate more and the essential oil collects on the top of the hydrosol. Something that I might have done differently for this distilling is to have chopped the bay leaves into smaller pieces. Um, that allows there to be more surface area that the steam um, can come into contact with and therefore can extract more 
water soluble parts of the plant material. So this is pretty amazing. This is actually the most essential oil I have been able to produce in the handful of times that I have been distilling now. simmer inside I can't really see because it's copper but the copper is also a really good conductor of heat and so it, it's not hard to, to keep it really level but you'll find too sometimes I'll turn off the hot plate in order to let the whole system kind of cool down a little bit because you really don't want the hydrosol or the essential oil that has that really pungent smell from getting too hot. So that's a little peek inside of the bottom colander that holds the plant material. I used the bay leaves, twigs, and uh, I cut the branch up pretty well, so there's a lot in there. I am really carefully breaking apart the still now so that it will cool down faster. Um, these clamps are on really well so that no air or steam comes out of them and there's a rubber ring that goes between each of them as well. At this point that is too little of an amount of essential oil that I feel I would be able to safely um, squeeze out of there and so I am without getting that plant material that came out I'm going to add it to this hydrosol because it will just, oops, spilled a little out the other end. It will just help this hydrosol also be um, a little bit stronger of a scent, um, even though it really didn't need that. Bay laurel is way more strong of a scent than I've uh, yet to have dealt with, so that was a nice surprise as well. So this is how I'm going to store the hydrosol in my fridge for now until I can sanitize a jar large enough for this amount of hydrosol and bottle it. And it's always best to store your hydrosols in the fridge for the time being that you're not using them. So I have a little corner of our fridge that I keep for our hydrosols and any other products that I'm working on. Well, thank you for watching this video on